1923, astronomer Edwin Hubble noticed something weird in the Andromeda Nebula. It was a flashing light. And of course, it was a Cepheid variable, a type of variable star. But this star is very special. From its pulsation period, Hubble was able to calculate how far away this star was, and consequently, he was able to determine that Andromeda Nebula was in fact one million light years away. That was more than three times the expected size of our galaxy, the Milky Way, which can only mean one thing. Andromeda was not just a cloud of gas and dust in our galaxy, but instead it was a whole entire galaxy itself. Now that was the first galaxy we ever found, but of course it was not the last. As more and more galaxies popped up, Hubble did the only thing that any decent person would do. He organized them into the Hubble tuning fork. But now that we are at the era of the Euclid Space Telescope, the number of galaxies that we know of now far exceeds what we knew back then. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou, and in this week's video, we're talking about the new Hubble tuning fork, the Euclid tuning fork. So this is Hubble's tuning fork. This was published in 1936. He noticed that there were elliptical galaxies and round galaxies. Some had spiral arms, some had central bars. And this is what he came up with, this diagram to sort them into three groups based on how they look. The fork-like shape is what gives it its name, the tuning fork. To the left, we have E for elliptical galaxies. These are the most featureless, starting with E0 with the very round galaxies, evolving into E7, the most elongated. At the point where the handle meets the prongs, we have lenticular galaxies. These are labeled as S0. These galaxies are considered as an intermediate type of galaxy, their transition type. They have a bright central bulge, kind of like an elliptical, and a disc-like structure, more like a spiral. But they lack the visible spiral arms, and they don't have significant current star formation. Next, we split into two parallel branches, with the normal spiral galaxies on top. These are classified from SA to SC based on two characteristics, the bulge size and the spiral arm tightness. So SA have large bulge and are tightly wound, whereas SC have small bulges and have very loose spiral arms. The lower branch of this branch are barred spiral galaxies, and these are identical to normal spirals, but they have a straight luminous bar of stars running through that central bulge. The spiral arms emerge from the ends of the bar, and these are classified from SBA to SBC. Now, originally, Hubble thought that this was an evolutionary sequence, that galaxies began as small, round, elliptical galaxies, gradually evolving into these loose spiral or barred spiral galaxies. And this is why elliptical galaxies are known as early type galaxies, even though they actually contain old red stars, whereas spiral galaxies are known to be late type galaxies, even though they contain young blue stars. Now, at the time of publication, Hubble believed that there was about 60 million galaxies in our universe. But today, we think that number is closer to 2 trillion galaxies in our observable universe alone. Okay, so Euclid, in its Q1 data release, based on just 0.45%, or one week worth of observations of its nominal survey, observed 26 million galaxies. And from a subset of these, the Euclid Consortium were able to construct this. This is the Euclid tuning fork. It turns out our galaxies are a lot more complex than Hubble predicted. They're like snowflakes. No two galaxies are exactly the same. They come in all sorts of colors, sizes, and shapes. Now, the tuning fork diagram has now been extended to include a third prong for spiral galaxies with a less pronounced subtle bar that they call intermediate spirals. Then we have additional classes, SAM, SABM, SBM, where the M stands for Magellanic, indicating that these galaxies are generally smaller dwarf spiral galaxies and are considered late type systems. 
They usually have a single patchy spiral arm and a subtle, if not completely absent, central bulge. Now, these galaxies are seen as an immediate type between dwarf spiral galaxies and irregular galaxies, which show no spiral structure at all. They're often chaotic or disrupted, and that's why the irregular class IM appears next to them. But then, next to that, we have dwarf elliptical galaxies, which happen to be a very important type of galaxy because they're so faint. They were pretty much impossible to see before Euclid. But using Euclid, it turns out that these are some of the most common galaxies in our universe. These tiny, faint dwarfs are believed to be the building blocks of larger systems like the Milky Way. Now, it really bugs me that this class isn't over on the left there with the ellipticals, but this is because even though they look like mini elliptical galaxies, in reality, they're not similar at all. It's likely that these dwarfs formed from stripped spiral or irregular galaxies, not from the merging of larger galaxies like we think that elliptical galaxies formed. Now, lastly, we also have some galaxies that don't seem to fit the classification scheme at all. We have edge-on spirals because it turns out that we live in a 3D universe, so it would be weird if we only ever saw galaxies that were always face-on. Edge-on spiral galaxies are spiral galaxies viewed from the side, so it's impossible to make out what their spiral arm structure actually looks like. But they're still super important, because from this angle, we can make out the size of the central bulge relative to that thin disk. And this is a major classification criterion for face-on spiral galaxies. Here we can see the distribution and properties of dust and gas, and usually this is as dark silhouettes against the brighter light of the bulge. And we can see the distortions or thicker stellar components caused by past interactions, maybe by other galaxies. And of course, the universe isn't static, so we have these merging and interacting galaxies. Now, these are usually classified as irregular galaxies because their shapes are severely distorted and chaotic, but interactions and mergers are primary mechanisms that drive morphological changes and are thought to transform galaxies from spiral to elliptical type galaxies. Interacting galaxies display these iconic tidal tails, these long streams of stars and gas pulled out of the disk by gravity. Euclid's high resolution makes it perfect for identifying these subtle structures, which can be super helpful for helping us learn about the number of mergers and how they change over time. And then we have more elliptical and irregular dwarf galaxies. Many of these are either primordial dwarf galaxies or galaxy remnants distorted by gravitational interaction. Anyway, it looks like there's loads of different types of galaxies in the Euclid survey and Euclid is going about to classify all of these millions of galaxies, which will ultimately lead to this largest morphological catalog in history, possibly an even more extensive galaxy tuning fork. That's all I have time for this week. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe. Hey space cats, fly with me to the stars Faster than light Soaring past Mars Unveiling the cosmos New worlds to explore